ready to just run away to some island and call it quits? Come talk to me. We trying to rebuild Black Wall Street. This is for us, by us. everybody this is perky of perky perspectives thank you for subscribing to the podcast the podcast is available on all platforms which includes apple Podcasts, google play spotify youtube patreon icn.dj slash perky perspectives periscope radio public i sometimes go on station head and on my website perksofwellness.org and on the forusnation.com website so please become a patron. You can find me at patreon.com slash perky perspectives. It's really nice to have the support. So you can support for as little as $1 a month. And this basically goes to any travel expenses or engineering help or editing or if I need to do a new logo, anything like that. And I'm actually looking for assistance right now with my newsletter and my blog. So if you are good at any of those things, I would rather bring on somebody from my network than having to hire out or through Fiverr or something like that. So you could please email me at perkyperspectivespod at gmail.com. And all of this is in the show notes. Also, go follow me on social media. My personal page is Perky Sexy Cool. And then my podcast page is Perky Perspectives. And shout out to the For Us Nation. Again, like this podcast episode is actually under the For Us umbrella. And that is for us to be able to find black businesses, for us to be able to talk about our news and blog and just uplift each other. And we do meetups right now. It's a little different, (laughs) but we do put on meetups. So we've been doing virtual meetups, virtual um, IG takeovers. So if you have a business and you want to have that platform, you can take over our IG for about an hour or so. Um, So you can follow that page at for us, the number four US at uh, on Instagram. And then also through my love period platform, uh, we help to provide feminine hygiene products and educational materials to girls, women, and anybody that needs to know more about feminine hygiene and how to have the talk. So you can find that at tinyurl.com slash love period project. Also, one more thing, I am the nominations director for the Black Pod Awards. So please go apply. You can go to blackpodawards.com. Um, applications are open until August 1st. We're also looking for judges. So you, if you have any expertise in podcasts or awards or anything of the nature, please send your interest to me. And also we're looking for sponsors or anybody that wants to donate or give or participate in the podcast. So again, that's blackpotawards.com and the um, social media handles are Black Pot Awards as well. So today for the For Us episode, I have with me Artisha Bolding. She goes by T. She's a Georgia-based empowerment coach and author, and she is the head of the T. Bold Media Group. She is best known for her loud belly laughs and the love of truth. As a consultant and speaker, Artisha has spent the last decade providing relationship and spiritual advice to friends, clients, and youth groups. Artisha was inspired to write her first book, The Journal, after a near-fatal visit to the ICU due to medical mishap. Prayer and instructions from her spiritual father, Bishop Hezekiah Presley Jr., are the reason she walks in healing today. When she's not out shopping and missing D.C. ever so terribly, (laughs) you can find her on a Twitter rant, and her Twitter is Miss Tyson, and she knows God will do great things because we expect him to. Her other book is Induction to Power, and this is specifically for those looking to level up personally and professionally. The mindset shift, mindset shift that this book will cause is going to change you forever. The induction book is going to ignite your mind and take you to the next level of flowing in your purpose. So hi, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. And like, this is a lot like in your bio, I'm like learning so much about you already. And so I have a lot of questions. But before I ask you my question, the thing that triggered me the most was the medical mishap. And like, I'm putting it in quotes, because I don't know what it is. But I was just speaking to my aunt about how us black people, like we have different things that we go through as males and females. 
And it seems like our men, the most issues that they usually have has to do with their bodies and their strength and being perceived as, you know, a threat. Whereas us women, we're not listened to when we're going to like the doctors or anything like that. It's like, they just, it's like, we're not there. And so I'm mm-hmm. wondering if your medical mishap, had, that's what it triggered me. I'm like, did it have anything to do with them not listening to her, basically? <laughs> but I don't know if you speak on that, but... I do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Absolutely. And I'm, I'm just honored that you will have me here to be able to share with your listeners. And let me just first say that I appreciate the work that you are doing it. Anything I can do to support you. Absolutely. But you hit the nail right on the head. So we heard Serena Williams' story, right? So we know this is not necessarily a class issue. This is not an economic status issue. You have the most recognizable Black female athlete in the world who had an experience with doctors that nearly killed her because they didn't want to listen to what she was saying about what she knew that was happening in her own body that she had already dealt with medically. She was not just providing um, opinion. Right. And so with me, it was really, really crazy. Um, and we can get as deep as you like, but I want to give you a chance to ask any other um, questions that you had on your heart. Um, from Thanksgiving of 2017 up until Mother's Day week of 2018, I would be hospitalized four times. Wow. I spent a total of 26 days in the hospital with them like throwing spaghetti on the wall really just not knowing what the diagnosis was and it was super super crazy i was 38 at the time and had no medical history um of i'm talking about asthma high blood pressure nothing i was on no prescription drugs at the time and so they were really doing what they call the practice of medicine really just practice seeing what's stuck yes you understand <laughs> and that is a very very dangerous thing let yeah. me tell you this story so well we can work our way backwards so once i finally got with an amazing talented care team here at um Georgia Regents University, it's Augusta University, um, now in their actual pulmonology lab, they understood that what I was suffering from was pulmonary hypertension, which actually caused me to go into congestive heart failure. So it wasn't just, uh, you know, allergic reaction or a bad mistake. I was literally dying. Like I coded, had to be resuscitated the whole deal. Is this right. You could have prevented or not. Pre- yeah. Is there something you could have done to like prevent that before even going to the hospital or it was kind of just like one of those things? They, the thing is, and it's crazy to me that they even have a name for it. They call it, I want to say it correctly. They call it idiosyncrasy, idio, excuse me, idiopathic, idiopathic okay. and idio like idiot, which is their textbook term for they don't know. <laughs> and that's what is literally in my chart. Yeah. They, I mean, other investigative tests have been going on. I've had more echocardiograms, EKGs, MRIs than you could even imagine. But the crazy thing was, had I got the proper referral at the proper time, it definitely could have saved me a lot of time, heartache, and money. Because as you can imagine, I'm still paying those <laughs> medical bills. Okay. Right. Um, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> T-Bow books, go ahead on and, uh, you know, support your girl. So, um, and like I said, the care team that I finally ended up with was um, amazing and very caring. But when I started 
this journey, I have to tell you this crazy story. So my mom is a pastor and naturally she is praying for healing. I'm a woman of faith myself. I absolutely believe in that. And at the same time, of course, we do believe in um, utilizing the healthcare system when necessary. So we can't deny that. And so, you know, she is, um, you know, just kind of encouraging the doctors and she's, you know, trying to get to know them and encouraging them as far as their families. That's just what she does. She's mm-hmm. a people person, doesn't meet a stranger. So by her being so kind of outgoing with that and everyone knew who she was and what she was, that actually caused them to put a label on me. The nurse was asking me about um, if I was aware of any drug allergies or anything that I had. And she asked, just like the ask, if you're a smoker, if you're a drinker, and if you use any recreational drugs, And I overheard her when they were having a shift change speak to another nurse. She thought that I was hiding recreational drug use because my mom was a pastor. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And what in fact was happening, they gave me Percocet, which why when a black woman presents to the hospital with respiratory issues, why you would give her Percocet? when Percocet is known to slow your heart down, like I found that on the internet. So I would think someone that went to medical school would know that. Mm. Whole nother thing, whole nother thing. Right. <laughs> but I overheard this. a really strong drug for somebody that doesn't take any, like anything, like you're not on any medication. That sounds like a really intense medication. Exactly, exactly. And, um, She was shared with uh, the other nurse, um, you know, you know, her mom was here and, um, you know, I think she wasn't being honest with us. She thought I was um, asleep. She didn't even have the sense to have the conversation outside of the room. But as luck, if you want to call it luck, what have you, I'm allergic to Percocet. And so I went off the rails mm-hmm. like I had uh I don't I don't want to call it a manic episode but it was it was a manic episode I was laughing so loud hysterically I mean I've never laughed like this before in my life like it was to the highest volume I even knew my voice could go and then 30 minutes later I was in the very lowest of low and I was in tears. It was just, it sent me on a oh, roller coaster. You had a manic depression episode within minutes, it seemed like. Okay. Yes, because of their negligence, because, due to, you know, a label that she just slapped on me and, you know, not provided me proper care. But that was just, And that was just one hospital stay. Okay, so there are three others. So you can imagine. And I just know that when you read someone like, um, you know, Serena Williams, Michael Harriet, and sharing actual data uh, along with real stories, this is not something that folks are making up when we say that there is real discrimination and bias happening today in the medical community and our people are suffering. I lived it. So it's real. Yeah. And like it, it's crazy because what that makes me think of is when they don't listen to us and then they do some, they do whatever they want. Basically, it's one of those things that is kind of like a reminder to us that they don't feel a threat not even a threat, like not a threat by us personally, but just like they don't, they don't have any fear of consequences for doing anything wrong to us. It's just like, oh, Mm -hmm. she's lying, this and that, we're going to do this anyways, because it's like, they, it's like, what what are they going to do anyways? What, what, what's going to happen to me? And Mm -hmm. I think right now, obviously the tides are turning very great, Mm -hmm. and I hope they continue to go ahead and turn, Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's really bad. That's really terrible. Yes, and to be relegated to being a file number or a chart number or just that person in that room when you are at your darkest and most vulnerable point, that is, that's an awful feeling that I would not wish 
on anyone. So if I can leave anyone with tips, and this, again, young and old, okay, I was 38, which may be older than a lot of folks in your audience. I don't know what your uh, demographic is, but again, I was totally healthy and had very good insurance at the time, one of the higher paying jobs in my area. So those things don't matter. Unfortunately, it's the skin that you're in. So I would say when you, if you can help it at all, if you have any type of support system, do not go to the hospital alone ever. Out of respect, you can ask the nurses and the doctors if you can have a loved one in the room with you. But for your well-being, it is better to have another set of eyes and ears in the room. And always ask questions. Don't be intimidated by an MD behind someone's name or an RN behind somebody's name. Ask questions that you need to know and tell them what you have experienced that's going on in your body. Don't just let them tell you what is happening and what they think. That is my tip for everyone. And watch what you're signing because when you go into the hospital and there are certain papers that you sign, you're basically handing over yourself to the hospital. So mm -hmm. like, uh, for instance, um, women that are giving birth, when they start kind of getting agitated and stuff because, you know, it's painful and everything that mm -hmm. comes out of her, sometimes they'll, they'll push them down and they'll push them down to the table and things like that. And it's because there's probably some paper that you signed that yes. you, they gave them the right um, that's why they sometimes keep the placenta. They, they'll make you cut the cord, things like that. So yeah, like alongside of having somebody with you, make sure you know everything that you're signing. That's right. <laughs> it's really that's right. And that's, that's in every field that happens that's right. way too much. Like you hear it happening in the music industry and sometimes like, um, I had somebody tell me recently that they signed away the rights to their children on, and they didn't know, um, they were mm. younger and they didn't know that they were doing that. So it's mm -hmm. like, just be very privy to what you're signing. And if you do not know what you're signing and you have questions, there are, um, legal uh, websites and stuff that you could sign up for and even just have a lawyer look over your paperwork and, and basically put it in layman's terms because what we don't yes. understand, there's a different language for every field. So it's like it's written in English and I'm saying that with quotes for people right. who the podcast. <laughs> there's, there's different languages for every field. So it's like, yeah, this, they're talking lawyer language. <laughs> they're talking yes. this type specific type of language. So yeah, well, uh, unfortunately you went through that medical I don't even want to call it mishap because that could have been way worse than a mishap but I'm gonna just use the term that you use uh you went through that medical mishap but from that we got this journey that brought you to being an author is that correct to say Yes, and that is the blessing. So there's absolutely a silver lining to every dark cloud. And I'm I'm just so thankful, not thankful for those ugly experiences and the actual physical and mental pain of it, but so thankful that I was able to come out on the other side, revived, resurrected, and renewed. And the first book that came out of that whole experience was um, Journal for Your Journey. And that book is filled with affirmations and prayers because it was my faith that got me through being able to deal with people, being able to deal with systems, and being able to deal with uh, a diagnosis that I had no idea. And I just wanted to put something out there to encourage folks, motivate folks, and inspire folks, and also to let everyone know that you still do have control over what happens to you, mm -hmm. and your words have power. The things that you speak aloud will be the things that you see manifest in your life. It's not just the mushy, fluffy stuff it is real. Your words have power. Yes. So we should always difficult. speak life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's very difficult sometimes to stay mm -hmm. in that like alignment. But I think the reason why it's really good to make sure that um, we always speak it and write it. Like I, I say this a lot, you have to speak it, write it and think it. So mm -hmm. 
even when we have those moments to where our thoughts might like, oh, I can't do this or this is going to happen or whatever, then mm-hmm. have it written somewhere. Have it put on a mirror or something like that. One second. Um, have it have it put on a, a mirror and yes. write it down in a book, something so you can visually see it and that it can continue to guide you in your path. Yes. And I actually, for that very same reason, with Journal for Your Journey, I made it an actual journal. So there are daily prayers, there are scripture references. It is Christian based, but I always say I, I have friends who uh, practice Buddhism who have actually used uh, the journal. And there's a place every day for 31 days where you can write the things that you're sensing in your spirit the things that you're feeling and you can date it. So you can go back and look at the growth Mm -hmm. and see how things have progressed and see the things that you want to move forward. And I was purposeful in doing that. Yes. And you hit on two things that I actually do myself. Um, So I actually, thank you. I actually, um, I have found some journals from when I was younger. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. And I'm like that. I write dates on everything. And Mm -hmm. so I I was looking through stuff and, oh my gosh, (laughs) I don't know what I was going through, but it's, it's really nice to see. Like, it's embarrassing. (laughs) It's very embarrassing, (laughs) but it's really nice to see like all the different things that I was worried about. Like, like the boys that I had crushes on or like yes. people that frustrated me or whatever. And it's it's just so funny, but to like see the growth and like the things that I focused on and the things that I cared about that other like you know, people's um thought process towards me and everything, it was just like wow, ah, like <laughs> my my self realization has grown. And yes. and also with what you said about the Buddhism. So I was raised Christian. I still believe in God. I still pray. But I also, when I meditate in the mornings and in the evenings, like I I do Buddhism chanting, the Nietzsche and Buddhism chanting. And the mm-hmm. reason why for me, I think I really, really like it is because like when I was taught to pray, unless I was little and I was praying with my mom, um, I was like doing it in my head. Whereas mm-hmm. when I chant, I say it out loud mm-hmm. and vibrations and like, the sounds and stuff like it really helps me and it makes me feel like it you know you could feel certain different levels of thing you could feel the sound and mm-hmm. and all that mm-hmm. so that connection to like the universe and the overall being like yes healthy. so yeah I like I like what you said <laughs> <laughs> that what you're talking about is energy transfer which is also very real and being able to stand in your environment and stand in a place of peace and power and light, that is life-changing. That is transformational. So speaking those things out loud really is a must. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really helps. I think it helps you to feel happy. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's a struggle. I mean, some people it's easier than others. But I know people that have battled depression or are still battling depression. And I mm-hmm. think the hardest thing for them is to just feel that happy. But when they say things like, because, you know, usually you'll be like, I'm not where I'm supposed to be in life. I'm supposed to have a house. Why do my friends all have houses? Why are my mm-hmm. friends married? Why do my friends have money and they don't have debt or whatever you perceive their life to be? Because most of the time it's wrong anyways. Um, mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> what you perceive it to be is like this negative talk. Whereas if you just said, well, I started my business this week and I was able to make this much money and I'm in school and I'm getting good grades and, or whatever, or I'm healthy. I'm, I'm, I have a job even like, yes. it's like I have a job even during COVID. So a it's blessing. Like, yes. Exactly. Like hearing those things rather than saying the opposite, like that, that makes you happy. Cause then you could smile. Cause you're like, you know what? I'm right. <laughs> I'm yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And what I found is your mind, my sister did the weirdest thing years ago, but she started calling it your CPU, which is an old computer term right. that definitely show on my age. But your mind really is like a CPU. You can program it with the things that you say. So if you say, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I, I'm never going to do this, then your brain is going to absorb those things you're going to feel it in your body and your energy is going to shift that way Mm -hmm. but if you say 
I'm going to have a great day. I'm going to get my goals accomplished. I am happy. I am blessed. I am healthy. When you say those things, then your brain absorbs that and you feel that energy in your body. Yes. And I think it's important to have a few minutes every day where it's just all affirmations. Yes. All <laughs> yes. Like you said, it is a manifestation. So if you go around thinking you're ugly and saying you're ugly and feeling you're ugly, like whatever you perceive ugly to be is going to start to show out on your body. Yes. <laughs> like, and that's what you're going to attract because that's the energy that you're giving off. Yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> so get the journey book. <laughs> Please. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and um before we talk about the other book that you have um mm-hmm. i saw that you have gifts that you offer through your website as well can you speak a little bit about that yes i'm so glad you brought that up because i wanted to offer that um to your listeners and anyone who may stumble onto the show yes. um i established actually just a couple of months ago my trailblazer email community and I send out um, things to the community just about twice per month. And for folks who will go to my website, which is tboldmedia.com, and that's T-B-O-L-D-M-E-D-I-A.com, you can click on the link to join the Trailblazer community. And I'm offering everyone that does that a free copy of the mini ebook version of Journal for Your Journey. So what you would get is lots of goodies, but uh, you get a full week of prayers and affirmations, and um, it will guide you if you want to journal. And there are also some um, other reading tips and things that you can say aloud and practice to keep yourself centered. Nice. Okay, so yeah, everybody go visit tbowmedia.com sign up i know i am i like free free 99 that's the best that's it (laughs) (laughs) and i'm like super into this and it'll be good for me as well because uh i do mental health therapy so to be able to offer something outside of just tips to like tangible um help to i mean i know it's an ebook but like something that they can see they can print out they can use or i could print it out for them or whatever like to have that be a piece of the process I think it would be very helpful for people so definitely going to recommend that okay so the other book induction to power can you speak so the in that which one was first so the journal was first and um I did that I was so excited to be one year into my healing so um my last and longest hospital stay was May of 2018 excuse me so may of 2019 is when i released journal for your journey and then i got so excited and i wanted to help folks more and do um do things just really help people level up and do the thing called next right we're all looking to kind of go to the next phase the next level the next chapter and so that's where induction to power came. And I definitely want to highlight the subtitle there because the subtitle of the book literally says, break up the darkness in your life, burst with light and walk in purpose. So induction is the mindset shift book, I call it, the personal and professional development. Because what I know to be true and what I believe in my heart is that we are all born with a purpose. We each, you agree, right? Yeah, definitely. (laughs) We each have a unique assignment, something that no one else can do in our lifetime and we are all on a purpose discovery journey every day and so induction of power helps you kind of highlight those things and helps you to realize that there is something that i enjoy doing there is something that i'm passionate about there is something that ruffles my feathers and so 
it um, causes you to think, okay, how much time are you devoting to other things versus that purpose, that unique assignment for your life? So I had to get that out because too many of us spend too long wandering or even running in the wrong direction. And I just want folks to be aligned. Mm -hmm. Does that have journaling in it as well, or is it mainly just a um, it's really um, full of nuggets and so a journaling process can be incorporated with it I just did not um, include the space to journal directly in the book but so oh, many um, books helpful for that reason mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. like I <gotta> get both <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so I think how I um speak about it on um the website which is getting an overhaul y'all so I hope that you all uh visit and go ahead and join the trailblazer community get that free gift and those good stuff that I have coming out uh twice per month but um give me a couple of weeks and come back to the website you're going to see I'm getting the makeover is very very exciting um, but how I talk about the um, the books on the site, I say that journal is the faith shift and induction is the mindset shift. So when you put those two together, I'm telling you, you become a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And, and things start to align better. I mean, I think uh, there's a few things that you said that I want to highlight. One, um, you were talking about self-development as well as professional development. And I feel like a lot of us don't do as much self-development um, for ourselves. Like if you have a job, then a lot, a lot of the times they'll have professional development already incorporated mm -hmm. into the, the position. Um, so like sometimes people just rely on whatever is provided through the job, which I would still say do your own on the side, especially if it's something that you really like doing. But the self-development is key, not just because it will help you to make sure you're walking in your path, but also for those times that you kind of feel incomplete or like, I know there's days where it's like going to work is just like, oh, I got to get up. Well, maybe not right now because of COVID, but like <laughs> <laughs> you get up and it's just like, why does this feel so hard to do? Whereas yeah. when you get up to go do something for yourself, like something self-care, like get your hair done or something, it could be early in the morning. You're going to still pop up like it's nothing. So yeah. that would be a part of the self-development to find out, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I walking in my path? And you'll see things will start to work out better for you when you're going the way you're supposed to be going. Because usually when you're not, it's like life keeps throwing stuff at you. And you're like, why is this so hard? It's like, because this is not the way you're supposed to be going. <laughs> like, Come on, that's called a spiritual nudge. Hello. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, it starts off as a nudge. But the more you continue to walk in the wrong way, it starts to get a little bit more forceful. <laughs> so. yes. Oh, my goodness. You are telling the truth, honey. That's the truth. And I feel like the world would, we would be, well, homogeny is the word that I'm trying to use. Like everything will work more homogeneously. I may have made that up just now. If we all were doing what we're supposed to be doing, there's space yes. in the world for everybody. And, but you should, you should be doing what you're like destined to do, like what your gift was, what your purpose is. And so rather than looking at Jane over there and saying, oh, well, Jane, she started a t-shirt company and she made whoop -de whoop money doing that. So I just want money. So I'm going to start a t-shirt company too. It's like, don't get me wrong. Like if the t-shirt company will benefit what your purpose is supposed to be like, and you just want to have ownership over what you're doing, like buy anything, mm -hmm. like do what you have to do, but mm -hmm. don't just do something because somebody else is doing, because that's not your path. Like you have to figure out what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And that's part of that self-development. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 100% agree. Yeah. So I was saying that I think both books, I mean, I'm sure you agree, but I think both books should be um, done together because it's like, I'm sure while they're reading the Induction to Power book, they're, they're going to be unlocking things in their head like, oh yeah, I should be focusing on that. And then you could use the journal to make that something that you focus on for that day or something that you focus on for that week or however long and until it starts to align with yes. purpose and power. So. Yes, and you see real results. Perky, let me, I want to chime in just real quick with something that you said, especially about 
folks who are still working on traditional jobs. What, I mean, what is even traditional right now with COVID, but right. um, those that um, have a nine to five, whether you're, you know, nine to five and virtually or on uh, just kind of skewed, changed hours with everything that's happening. But I was re recently in a coaching session and one of my colleagues, bless her heart, beautiful lady, she has two businesses that she started. One is an apparel uh, business and one is where she actually helps senior citizens and families. And she said something to me that was so illuminating. She said, she started her apparel business because one day she literally laid in the floor of her bedroom crying because she did not want to go to work. So if that is you, if you are drudging what you're doing every day, not sometimes it's because there are crazy personalities in our work group and things like that. Sometimes it's a project that's different. But if you just have this sinking feeling when you go into work or report to work, you feel like you're going to the dark place. That is a key sign that you need to pause, mm -hmm. take a moment, and consider doing something differently. We all have to feed our families, right? The electric company and the store, we have to go get our groceries. Nobody is getting anything but good looks and good intentions, right? That's so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we know you have to earn money, but... Think about your responsibility to your soul and the world. We need your gifts. We need you properly aligned and walking in your purpose because that is how we get to that harmony and that homogeny. So I plead with you, don't avoid that. Do that. Even if you have to start it as a side hustle, mm -hmm. even if you have to do it on the weekends, but go forth. Lean into your greatness and do what you are called to do. Yes. And don't make excuses. And if you are making excuses, then that's another reason to journal to figure out why. Because mm -hmm. I've had plenty of people tell me why I can't do it. And myself. <laughs> and myself. And then you're like, oh, I can't do this because of whatever. And then you start it. And it's just like, what was I talking about? Like, mm -hmm. even the shirt company. Like, one, you, like, you could just start simple by going to get the shirts made from somebody else until you yes. make enough money selling the shirts to go and buy your own first heat press or screen printing machine or direct to garment. Yes, I, I've been looking this this up myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's different levels. And I tell people that all the time because some people think, well, um, I have to have like the perfect website and the perfect cards and the perfect logo and I have to have my LLC already and stuff. And that's cool. Don't get me wrong. It would be perfect if we all had that million dollar check from our dad when we wanted to start our business like somebody else's president be talking about. But we don't all have mm -hmm. So if you can just start with what you already know how to do, let that yeah. be the investment or talk to your friends. Like do for us, that's one of the things that we're doing. We're starting a susu. So just like how these other groups do to where they'll all come together and they'll put their money into a pot and then they'll fund one business and let that other business make the money to go back into the pot to fund the next business. That might be how you can get started too. So it's definitely options to, to moving forward. So don't feel defeated. Just you got to write it out. You got to write it out. And you got to talk about it. Yes, absolutely. And I love that too. And guess what? We've gotten so far and so disconnected from what our ancestors did. So I love that what you all are doing with that, um, you know, the group funding and putting um, your tribe members I want to say out there that is what our ancestors did and we need to get back to that communal familial society and uh readopt those things because society as a whole was so much better we as a people were so much better off when we we're doing those things so I love 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 that you all are doing that yeah and it's it's cool because it's like we don't have to reinvent the wheel like they did it a long time ago all we mm -hmm. need to do is make sure all the parts are still working maybe we can remodel the car or whatever update it but the wheel is perfect like <laughs> that's that's a good spot <laughs> that's um, right 
So also in your bio, it was speaking about your spiritual father, and I may have butchered his name earlier. So Bishop Hezekiah Presley Jr. Oh my gosh. I love him. I um I dedicated uh the first book to him um along with um a few other angels in my life, my mom, my husband, and my sister, um, because they just supported me in a way that I never knew that I would need. So um in you know in the process with the um medical issues like literally having to have someone help me to the bathroom in the bathroom things like that it was really crazy so having someone to even speak into my life and to uh encourage me for my future when I couldn't that was that was priceless and um my spiritual dad gave me some of the best advice I've ever received in my life and I want to pass that on to anyone that's listening and that is share your story and in doing that don't leave out the dark yucky part because <laughs> I'm telling you because someone's deliverance someone's freedom someone's release is in your story so you have to tell it you have to share don't be embarrassed because that is a part of your becoming story yep and it's funny because I, I really that resonated with me just now. I was like triggered because <laughs> <laughs> because how many times I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna tell them this part, like, or I'll do this thing to where I say I have ten friends. It's like, okay, you'll get this piece, you'll get this piece, you'll get this piece. So it's like I'm releasing it, but I'm not releasing it all fully to everybody. And I probably still have a few pieces that I keep to myself. And I mm -hmm. feel like, um, so just to disclose, like. I was in a domestic violence relationship in like 2015 or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe the beginning of this year and maybe like a little bit of last year, I was able to fully be over it. And I thought I was over it probably like 2017. I thought I was, I was good. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me that I really wasn't because... One, when I got out of it, I didn't get to really talk about it. Like, that's one of those topics where people don't really want to hear about it because they feel bad or whatever it makes them feel. So they kind of be like, oh, but like, they don't really want to hear the details. Or right. So I didn't really get to talk about it too much. And then when I would, I would just kind of be like, yeah, I was in, you know, I was in a domestic violence relationship. Yeah, whatever. Like, like it was whatever. And so until I was able to fully like tell somebody and just be like, mm -hmm. yeah, like we used to be fighting and we used to do this and I, this happened to me. Then it was just like, oh, oh, like, and, and not only did I release it, but I, t I also owned up to the actions that I partaked in, not really during, cause I already had like understanding of that, but more so after, like how I mm -hmm. let it drag me down after the relationship and the decisions that I made and like just the irresponsibility with my own life after the relationship because I wasn't over it and when I was yeah. able to really like focus on like that part then like although like you said it's embarrassing it's uncomfortable um especially if you're not in the place that you want to be it's really mm -hmm. hard sometimes to own up to what you did to get there rather than what somebody else did to you to get there mm -hmm. and then I was just like okay now I'm ready to move forward <laughs> yes yes that is so powerful and the thing about it is you have to realize we're so self-centered because that's how we're wired that's how we come into the world right as humans we are self-centered we are about self-preservation mm -hmm. and you know what we meet in our own needs but perky you have to think about there's a 16 year old perky out there there's an 18 year old perky out there there's a 65 year old perky out there that needs that boost needs that confidence needs to know guess what someone else has navigated these waters already so who are you not to share why would you let that 18 year old that 65 year old whomever step on that same landmine that you did you right. owe it to them to share that yeah like very much so i i truly believe that too like that's that's definitely the truth because i i learned um after the fact that somebody close to me had went through it and i didn't blame them but i kind of felt jaded because i was like i wish you would have shared your experience with me because maybe i wouldn't have been 
in the same situation. Not saying I wouldn't have, but just kind of like, it kind of felt like, dang, like, and we could have mm-hmm. connected on something, you know, as well. So yeah, I definitely mm-hmm. agree. It's important for not just you, but for other people to share. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, what's his name? Bishop Hezekiah. Yes. <laughs> I'm really trying. I had to guide myself with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Shout out Bishop. I know you will probably never, he's done, he doesn't do a lot of TV. He's like all CNN and word channel kind. He doesn't do a lot and doesn't do a lot of um, radio and podcasts. But well, I'll make some clips for him so that he can listen to just that part. <laughs> That's right. I'll send it right to his phone, his wife's phone, because she'll be the one to play it for him. So. Yeah, <laughs> um, so is there anything else that people should know about you, your journey, your website, what's to come, um, how to reach out to you or anything like that? I would love for folks to hit me up on social media. Um, believe it or not, I'm literally... Uh, just a year into IG, like I didn't get on that train. I was like, what do you mean there's another social media platform and it's all pictures? I'm like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but now I'm like all about it. So like, that's like the new hotness, I guess. Well, maybe not new, but anyway, no, that's where everybody not. is. Like now you see the time still. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that made me laugh too loud. What the <laughs> but um folks definitely like i said definitely um visit the website tboldmedia.com please sign up to be a trailblazer i would love to connect with you and all my socials are public so you can find me on facebook um at artisha.bolding and instagram at um artisha bolding i'm always dropping good stuff y'all so i'm not just saying that because it's me but i live to motivate and inspire that's what i do especially young and upcoming folks or even career changers people that just have that thing that they want to birth i help folks birth their business book and brand that's my whole deal so definitely link with me um on socials and hit up the website so you can get some goodies yes definitely hit up the website and oh uh, i think one more thing that you didn't add was your email Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, folks can, e- I have too many email addresses right now, but uh, the best one, uh, you remember this because I had to go through such a huge process of healing. E- you can email me at thehealedgirl at gmail. That's the, um, that's the blessed place. And that's where um, the trailblazer emails come from anyway. So if you have a story you want to share, if you want to hear more about the craziness that was my life, I'm an open book. So hit me up. Okay. And so, yeah, so get her two books. Um, It's the journal or is it a longer title? The full title is Journal for Your Journey, and um, I refer to it as The Journal, and then the other book is Induction to Power, so those are great, great resources. I promise you will see results, and you'll feel them. Okay, yes. Thank you so much for that. So yeah, everybody, get her two books, Journal for Your Journey and Induction to Power. You can find that on her website, tboldmedia.com. Reach out on all her uh, social media platforms or whichever one you connect with the best. Um, Those will all be in the show notes. Also, even though um, this was mainly an audio uh, podcast, so you will find it on um, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Pandora, and everything is um, all listed in the show notes. I will also post the YouTube video. You'll only see my face in her pretty picture. <laughs> I'll be moving and doing all this stuff, talking. It looks like I'm talking to myself, but um, <laughs> I will put that on YouTube as well for my audience members that are more visual. And so please share these out. There's, like she said, there's plenty of people that need to hear this. And just to highlight again, um, this is on the For Us platform. And I really just want to hone this in that we need to start listening to each other. Like even within our own community, we need to listen to each other because it's been a struggle to get other people to listen to us but I really want you guys to if you don't get anything else from this go get the book induction to power so that you can really figure out what it is that you're supposed to be doing because um there's been a lot of people that lives have been saved or their their sense of self has been saved because they were able to connect with somebody that looked like them and was of their same experience in a field that they needed For example, I just read a story 
of this young lady that had to go into surgery and she had to get surgery on her on her head and the doctor was a black man and he had daughters so rather than just shaving her hair off like they usually would he took out some of her braids and was able to do the incisions on the, uh, where her part was and he rebraided it for her so that she wouldn't have to shave her head and nobody wow. else really understand that because they wasn't through her same experience so like wow. if you're thinking about being a doctor or whatever don't be discouraged because there's going to be somebody out there that's going to really appreciate the fact that they found you therapist whatever whatever you're trying to go into there's going to be somebody that's going to connect with you off of that alone like it's just like when you go to a new school and you go and you about to sit down for lunch who you look for <laughs> I look for color first I'm like where are my black people at like <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we really need y'all and so and also if you have a black business just like our teacher I would love to add you to the directory on forusnation.com so people can find mm -hmm. you if you are also a black business owner and you would like to be added, please go and check it out. It's ever growing because um, we re rebuild in Black Wall Street. So thank you again for being on the show. I really appreciate you. And I look forward to talking to you more and sharing this out to the world. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This has been amazing. Thank you so much and have a blessed day in the rest of your weekend. And are we skipping past 4th of July, you guys? So, you know, pay attention to the blackout. <laughs> <'Cause> that's right. <laughs> huh? What'd you say? I said, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so have a good rest of your week. Ready to just Ready. run away to some island and call it quits? Come talk to me. We trying to rebuild Black Wall Street. This is for us, by.